Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Adam. And I'm Felix. And we have been gone for about a week in Blackpool, England for the Blackpool Magic Convention. We are back and we are back with full force. So we're just going to dive right into it. As always, we're not going to monetize the videos. So if you want to support us, you can do that at volpinecreations.com. Today's video, we are taking zero to hero. So Felix has done the best ever knots off silk. And we're just going to look at it together, give some feedback, check back in this Friday. That's when you'll see the updated performance. So if you're following the zero to hero journey of Felix, it's going to be every Monday and every Friday. Monday, we will look over the performance videos, critique them. Friday will be the update. So tune back on Friday for that. But for right now, let's dive right into the performance. Felix, do you have anything to say before we take a look at the performance of Best Knots Off Silk? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Uh, I really want to point out that uh, I gained a whole new respect for silent performances, even even mimes to say, because I felt like an absolute moron while performing it. It was a pretty, pretty difficult experience. I'm so used to constantly talk when I do things and basically be not able to say anything and just try to express what I'm trying to bring across via motions and, and, and mimic was hard. All <laughs> so, right. I think, uh, granted, the biggest challenge of a silent act is that, right? You don't have your words to communicate your emotions yeah. to the audience. So uh, I respect you trying. I've never done a silent act. Uh, that's not true. I have done one. It was a card trick. But yeah, it's challenging. Um, so let's, with with us knowing that, let's dive in and take a look at Felix's first performance of The Best Knots Off Silk. So here we go. Just to start real quick, uh, one thing to note, and I, I have watched this before. Normally, we, I try and watch it for the first time here, but I have seen this before. Just be aware of the number of times that you're going from the back and forth, your hands with the mm -hmm. silk. So without giving the method away, I know we're concealing something. So this is proving that both hands are empty. Um, but when you rewatch it, note to yourself or ask yourself, does that look natural? Or does it look like you're trying to overprove something? Uh, as far as the cheesy and feeling like a moron, right off the bat, if this was an opening piece, my impression, initial impression would be that this is a very serious, suave magician that's taking his act and him, himself very seriously, right? From the, the facial right. expressions of coming out to the way you're looking at the glass to the movements of the silk is very much a dramatic and um, serious tone to it. So you have to ask mm -hmm. yourself, would the rest of your show fit that character? This oh, serious that. Um, <laughs> uh, sort of, of uh, approach to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I see the point with overproving. And secondly, the, the seriousness, we can't have that because it won't fit in the rest of the show. 100%. So, uh, the, the biggest challenge would be then reforming how this is uh, presented, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there a way to present this with the more playful, comedic uh, character? I, I, there is, I think. And the number one thing would be the music you choose, right? Yeah. Um, that you can't get away from dramatic and serious when you're using a song like that. So the first suggestion yeah. would be find a song that fits your character, play with that song, um, so as we watch the rest of the performance, we'll know that that's one of the main uh, pieces of feedback is that we're going to change the tone of the character being presented and mainly doing so with the music. Mm -hmm. All right.
one uh, note there, when you're doing the move where your arm comes through the loop, uh, mm -hmm. try and maybe smooth it out because there's a jerking that looks like, okay, what's, what did he do there? So if we look at this, it's the, the moment right when you are taking your hand out. That can be a really slow and elegant, right? You don't have to hide it. That's the yeah. beauty of this trick. It's so fooling that any jerkiness or quick motion should totally be eliminated because the trick itself is just such a visual. I mean, even when you perform it, it's like, how is this mm -hmm. working? It's fooling. Uh, the only other note is, I think there's two ways to approach it, but when you pull the knot off, it becomes a little donut. Um, when I was taught this from um, Jeff, he had said, just keep it squeezed so it doesn't ever look like a donut. So it always can look like some sort of knot. So when you pull it off, you're sort of pinching it just so it looks like you're holding a knot instead of a donut, just to keep them okay. away. So yeah, it makes sense. Makes here's sense. The, all right, cool. Here's the jerky motion I was talking about. That flicking of it does, yeah. doesn't, it can do the exact same thing, but going very, very slow, right? And then it mm -hmm. looks, okay, there's nothing that he could be doing, <clears throat> not missing anything. Yeah, thinking back to this situation, I think that the, the silk got caught on the back of my hand. Oh, okay. And when I tried to, uh, when I tried to pull the knot, then the knot would be in the lower third of the silk. And so I tried to uh, basically give it a bit of a toss so it would stay in the middle. Okay, cool. Got it. One little note here. I know it's mm -hmm. hard without the audience, but that's such an applause cue moment there. Don't rush through it, right? So really let that let them applaud there uh, as opposed to do it quickly and then go right to the, the glass to get the knot put in there. So if you really, boom, look at the audience, let them let that sink in. They'll think the effect is over and then you yeah. get another beat, you drop it in there and show the three circles. Mm-hmm. I mean, not not a lot to critique on it, right? The, the main thing is the character. I know that's not the character you're trying to portray, so that throws it off. But the handling, mm -hmm. the movements, the timing, you know, just pausing a, a bit more on that last one to really let them know you're you're there for an applause, let them clap, then put it down and show the, the three holes. It, other than that, you know, everything looked and felt great. Uh, I think the challenge will be finding the music that will fit your character. All the mm -hmm. little nuances of having the knot on there and pausing and then blowing the silk. So the silk moves, but without obviously blowing it, I think is a great subtlety. You know, it, it allows there to be a moment for the magic to happen. They see this. They may know you're blowing on it, but still, if they didn't, then it looks mm -hmm. like real magic. And even if they do, it's still that, okay, that's the moment the magic happens. So all those little subtleties were, were done perfectly. The... The only things I could say is um, I think it's stronger if they don't see that it's a, a circle when you pull it off, if you can mm -hmm. keep it like that and show that it's a knot that's come off uh, and then don't walk, you know, not walking over that applause yeah. cue at the end. But other than that, it's the challenge will be to find the music that fits the character. And then in turn, I think yeah. your actions will be less dramatic and more um, playful, if you will. Yeah. Um I think the way to to keep the, the little donuts in more of a knot shape is to place two fingers on top and a thumb on the bottom while pulling it off because it came it comes off as a figure eight. Yeah. So scrunching these together and then it would it should look like a knot. Um, the music 
100%. I think uh, I try a different track, um, which is more playful. This this one was very dramatic, but I tried to, I found it, I liked it, and I tried to basically uh, time all the motions to the music. I don't know if this if this worked or came across. Yeah, uh, if you 100%. recognize it. Yep, all yeah. the, the yanking the knots on the beat, um, things of that nature. Again, would play perfect if that was your character. Right. Um, yeah. I just, I think uh, we're still talking about openers here. So in my opinion, it's always a risk to, to come out without introducing yourself or letting mm -hmm. me your voice. So if you come out to music and that's your opener, it sets a very specific tone to what kind of show it'll be. Even if it's yeah. a playful opener, right? People want to know who is taking them for this ride. So I've never been overly comfortable to open with music. And even when I do open with music, I still say something first. And actually my line when I did was, I normally don't do a lot of magic to music and I certainly don't do full on silent pieces but I'm gonna do just that. So I'm still letting them know who I am, they hear my voice, and then mm -hmm. I go into the silent bit. So um, something to consider, but if, if I know we're going through openers at this point, so um, you may feel that opening without saying anything is the way that, that feels comfortable for you, or if you want that piece as your opener, just know you can still say something before you start the piece. Hey, my name's Felix, you know, whatever it is, just to let people know who you are and get a feel for that energy that you'll be bringing without having them start the show by, you know, questioning, is this going to be a really theatrical, artistic, like to music magic show or uh, mm -hmm. we I talk? So just something to consider. Yeah. 100% um, with you. I'm going to try to find um, a different different kind of music because I think this will take a lot of the stress for me out of this. Um, and one thing, when Jeff McBride perf uh, performs this trick, he performs it with an audience, right? Because I feel it feels alone by myself in my living room. It feels extremely repetitive to do it three times. What he does is he shows it one time on his own. Then basically the second time, he lets the spectator uh, pull off the knot. The third time, the spectator ties and, and pulls the knot tight and then pulls it off, right? So it's it's um, showing it, then basically letting him letting the people getting into the magic, and then the magic happens in the in the heads of the spectator itself. For me, doing it three times in a row, it feels extremely uh, repetitive. Which it is. The only reason it flies yeah. for that trick, it's such a fooling trick, right? It's yeah. almost like all right what? Okay. He's doing it again. And you can't catch the person, but I agree. It's the same thing three times in a row. Uh, it's repetitive. So yeah. if you're going to perform it, then a hundred percent, I agree. His way is the best way to do it. The first one gets their eyes open. The second one, a spectator pulls it off. The third, the only downside is I never like my first trick. And this is a personal choice, but I never like my yeah. first trick to involve an audience member. I need to set the tone, set the pace, sort of get into my groove and having any interaction with the audience is risky for me. I just don't mm -hmm. love it. Doesn't, I mean, certainly doesn't mean it's the right or wrong way to approach it, but um, these are all, these are all reasons I wouldn't open with this trick personally. Um, mm -hmm. And if I did, I would script it, right? There would actually be a script to it where maybe there's an underlying music track on the background, but I would, I would absolutely be letting them know who I am. Um, I love the effect just per, for me personally, not as an opener. I love how yeah. it opens with it. Uh, I think Jeff's opening to get the audience clapping and just the buildup he has for it is a, is a master class on its own. I don't think I'm even skilled enough to pull off the way he pulls that off. So uh, mm. for me, if you're going to do the trick, it's getting an audience member involved, right? I think it would be so interesting to tie it together with the uh, silk to egg trick because you have the, the egg, then the silk, and you keep the silk for the, for the next trick, right? So that the prop would be uh, continu would, would, would continuity. The, uh, continuity over a bunch of tricks, right? So I, that you would show. I love that. I think that's yeah. great. 
it would show the egg, keep that, put the egg away with the silk, basically, and then go right into the knot of silk. Obviously, it also to change, lets them but... see a non-torn silk as well. Exactly, that's what I'm thinking about. I think it, it's a great opening with silk to egg and then going into that, I think is an awesome transition of a one, two. Um, that would allow you to do the silk to egg by yourself, get your flow, yeah. and then get an audience member up to tie the knots and stuff like that. I think that would be a killer way to start a, a show, silk to egg. I mean, we can, we can try it anyways, because the next trick I'm, I'm going to dive into is the bottle production, right? The bottle mm -hmm. opener. And um, after we critique that, I could try to tie everything everything together. So we have the bottle opener at the very beginning as a very visual piece, then um, silk to egg, and after that, knot of silk. I think that's a great beginning of a show for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Just to see how it feels and, and record it, show it, to, show it to our friends and basically get feedback. You'll have to figure out a way to either with Julia or somebody else, have them be the spectator because there's a lot mm -hmm. of nuances of them tying it and then pulling the knot off that you'll want to go through and, and see where the, the, um, the hiccups might come in. But yeah, I mean, that's an awesome opening to a show, uh, a vanishing bottle to a silk to egg to the best knots off silk. You've got mm -hmm. mine, you know, I'm game for that. That, that's a way cool. I would start a show of mine for sure. Awesome. So All right. I think, you you know, if you're going to change the music up, maybe keep in mind the direction will probably be to have a spectator there. So uh, keep that in mind with your music choice. And then when you refilm it, if it's possible to have someone stand in, they'll play both spectators, the one pulling the knot off. And then um, and yeah. you know, you, obviously you'll we'll get to this when we start getting onto the stage and practicing as an entire show but then there'll be some staging that you'll have to consider. You know, do you start in the audience so they can pull it off? Are you bringing someone up on stage? But those are all things that we can address after the fact. I think now for the practice video, it would just be getting someone to play the part of two spectators, not let them know what the effect is and have them do it as a, a blind spectator would, just pulling a knot off for the first time, see what their reaction to it is, how you would have to handle them, and then somebody tying it and what they may mm -hmm. do wrong or what you have to maybe show them to make sure it works right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What I also did is I performed it to a bunch of friends of mine, and um, but not as a silent a silent piece, but with Peter. And I basically took this old, um, this old uh, a, a knot in a handkerchief as a reminder for something. Do you guys in the oh, US yeah, do this as well? Or, yeah. or put a rubber band on your wrist so you always remember, oh, shoot, I was supposed to remember something. Yeah, because uh, from time to time, I'm pretty forgetful, right? So uh, basically, my wife, Julie, told me I should I should tie knots into a handkerchief, but I kept losing the knots. So I basically switched over and just remembered the holes. That's great. I, I Or even saying, you know, this is the old school notes app. You'd tie a knot to remember yeah. something. The problem was, once you completed the task, you still got a knot here. So yeah. I get rid of them. I think that's great. Yeah, it was fun. Cool. Um, all right. Then you've got, uh, you've got a week to, to update the, the music and the handling, and then we'll revisit it after um, today's Monday. So we'll be revisited on Friday and yeah. uh, we'll start piecing together the show. This will be three effects down after the, the vanishing bottle and uh, give you a pretty good understanding of which one feels right for an opener. And like you said, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean, oh, these are all only openers. These three could be the opening three bits of your act, just depending on how we, we structure them. So off to a good start. And, uh, cool. you know, I think you killed that one. It just comes down to, we both know that's not who you are on stage. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why you felt so awkward doing it. because it's not your character. That might be the case. But uh, thank you very much for the feedback. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we will see you all on the next one. Uh, please do like, subscribe. You know what to do. We don't have to say it. So thanks for being here. Hope you took something from it. And we'll see you on the next one.